Welcome back, everyone. We're in John chapter 2 this week. Hope and pray that your time in God's Word has been a blessing to you. We'll be talking about one of the most interesting miracles Jesus performs. In fact, his very first miracle, turning some water into wine. You ever wondered about this miracle? Why on earth is Jesus, the Son of God, the Holy One, the Word made flesh, making wine? Let's backtrack just a little bit. So at the start of your reading, you see that Jesus is attending a wedding. Big time celebration. Can you remember the last time that you were at a wedding? It's always kind of this fun, festive atmosphere. There's family members getting back together. There's always some kind of great food, great things to drink. Just a lot of fun going on. And even in and of itself, it's significant that Jesus would want to show up at an event like that to let us know that, hey, God has come down, the Word has become flesh, to have some fellowship with us and for us to have joy associated with that. Over the course of time at this wedding, the wine runs out. Now you have to understand in Jesus' day, weddings lasted like seven days, somewhere in that neighborhood. Not just, you know, maybe half a day like they do in our time. This is a long celebration. and Somewhere over the course of it, they run out of wine. Jesus' mother, Mary, is there. She comes to Jesus and asks him to do something about it. And he asks the same question that probably a lot of us would ask, too. What's that have to do with him? I mean, not too many of us are looking for God to plant the vineyard, grow some, or make some wine. So why is Jesus doing this? Well, there's a lot of prophecies in the Old Testament concerning the Messiah. A lot of things talking about what he would come to do. Many of them talk about how the time of the Messiah, the time of the one sent from God, would be a time of rejoicing. Rejoicing like at a feast, or even the mountains and hills dripping with wine because everything was just so abundant and good. So Jesus performs his first miracle, turning water into wine, but showing us so much more. See, John's going to tell us that this is a sign pointing to who he is. Sign not only, I believe, pointing that Jesus is the Messiah, but clearly pointing to us that Jesus is good news. He's a reason to celebrate. And that's the cool part when you read that first half of John chapter 2, that God actually wants to have us celebrate. God wants us to see that through Jesus there is absolutely good news for us. The good news that encompasses things like forgiveness and eternal life, the good news of there actually being truth that we can build our lives upon rather than just trying to make it up as we go along. The good news that God is here. is in your life. He is with us, and he is going to be with us for all eternity. And when he comes, there is healing and restoration and transformation and eternity with that. What a reason to rejoice. What a reason for Jesus to, yeah, keep the party going. Turn the water into wine. And as you read this week in John chapter 2, it's not all about celebration and parties. In fact, the latter half of that chapter makes a dramatic turn. No more celebrating, no more fun. Jesus is in the temple, and there are problems in the temple. In fact, the place is being used basically as this commercial zone. There are people being cut off from their access to God, trying to change out their money for temple coins, all kinds of bad things that are going on there. The heart and core of it is the fact that people who need to be with God and who need to understand their presence, his presence, are cut out from that. And that's probably one of the biggest things that is going to bother Jesus the most, is that people need to have access to God because it's only in him that we're going to find life. And they've been cut off. So what does Jesus do? If you read through the story, it's not exactly gentle Jesus with maybe a lamb around his neck or a carefree you know, moment with children. Jesus takes out a whip and starts kicking people out of the temple because this is so serious to God that people would believe and have access to him, that truly people would see their sins are forgiven, truly people would see that there is new life in him, that, yeah, Jesus gets angry about it because he doesn't want people cut off from him. The word's made flesh. God wants people with him, and he wants there to be rejoicing too. Must there be rejoicing that, yeah, your sins can be forgiven, you can have a new, fresh start with God, you can have eternity too. So take a look at John chapter 2 if you haven't so far this week. 
Think about those things, those celebrations. Maybe you'll sit and have a glass of wine as you read through the text. But definitely ask yourself, how do I see God bringing good news to me? How is Jesus a cause for me to celebrate? How can I let other people know that too so that they're not cut off, they're not restricted from knowing the things of God, but instead can rejoice in the truth and rejoice in the Savior Jesus. All right, well, hey, God's blessings upon you as you continue your study. Join us this weekend for worship, uh, Saturday night, Sunday mornings, and of course the Bible study at 9.15 Sunday mornings too.